Okay, okay. thank you very much. Kitos. <laughs> yeah, thank you again, and um, it's so nice to, uh, to be here, especially to be bowling last night. I found out I'm not very good. I'm better at doing this than I am at bowling. I also found out that you don't need to wear a shirt and tie. You can come in your jeans, which is kind of nice because I have a flight to catch right after my presentation. And today what I'm going to do is give you lots of details in terms of what we do at the Olympic Games with our uh, athletes to help them mentally and emotionally get ready to, uh, to perform uh, to, their, uh, to their potential. Yesterday I gave kind of a, an overview, but again today I'll try to keep it nice and simple but with more uh, video clips and a couple of interviews with uh, athletes and and I think it'll be, uh, something should be quite sticky. Yesterday I mentioned that um, Alex Bilodeau, uh, one of the athletes I worked with, he won a gold in Vancouver, he won another one in, um, in Sochi. And uh, again, one of the things which uh, came out of the, the work with Alex and the others was that the mental preparation, you know, about being in the moment, about staying in the moment, and owning the moment. I mean, those are things which the athletes really, really focused on. They tried to create their bubble and they tried to really stay in their moment and also to own the moment so that when they were on top of the hill looking down, they said, it's my line, it's my time. And the same thing, I've done that in figure skating, the figure skaters I work with. We draw a little diagram of the rink. We, we say, it's my music, it's my program, it's my ice. It's my moment, it's my time. And so we do those things and so, so that they know that they have something very, very special and it's time to go out and express themselves. And so like, but when you look at, at goals, you know, uh, what usually happens is with Olympic goal setting, so many of the, uh, the athletes in some countries, they focus on podiums, they focus on, on medals. What we do is we focus on process. We focus on getting better every day, that I would call, that's the whole process. And those kind of goals are things that can be, can be controlled. So we, we bring it down to a daily thing, a weekly thing, a monthly thing. And then what we want at the, at the games is we want them to perform to their max, as good as they can be, right to their max. And that means they will, they will get their podium and they'll get their, ma their medal and that leads to a lot of nice other consequences in terms of sponsors and all this sort of thing, but we never talk about that. We, we, we keep coming back to process. And this is pretty basic stuff in sports psychology. That is focusing on process, focusing on performance, and as opposed to focusing on, on results. And what I find in terms of the results is that's something that's in the future. It tends to get the athlete out of the, uh, out of the present. You know, so in terms of, of perspective, Yesterday, I think I'd mentioned two words that we used going into Vancouver with our athletes where we were hosting the Olympics and on the podium was putting pressure. We said, it's a privilege to be on this team, the Canadian Olympic team. It's an opportunity to show people, if you work hard for four years, what you can accomplish. So again, we put a really positive kind of spin on it. What a privilege, what an opportunity, as opposed to thinking about, I better do well, I hope I do well. I've got to win a medal, et cetera. I hope I don't let people down, my parents, my coaches, my sponsors, et cetera. And so here's, a, again, a gal I did a couple of Olympics uh, with, uh, Jen Heil. And just to, to sort of give the difference between the mental and the emotional, here's Jen in terms of the emotional, talking about enjoyment. I think that's a very emotional thing. Talking about motivation, what drives her. Again, that's not just mental, that's emotional. There's something with, which they, they focus on, and then also having composure and having resilience. You know, so in terms of the last two, composure is being able to stay calm, stay focused, and then the resilience, there's always things that are gonna happen. And uh, when I started working with Jen, it was just after the, uh, Salt Lake Olympics, she was 18 years old, just come to McGill, and she was coming off some serious injuries, some very serious injuries, back, shins and whatnot. And so the team that I showed yesterday, we worked hard on her to help her bounce back. There's a really good book, uh, which I give to athletes sometimes, 
who deal with injuries, it's called Coming Back Stronger. Coming Back Stronger. And it's by Drew Brees, he's the quarterback for New Orleans Saints. And uh, he, uh, he had a really serious shoulder operation, but he came back stronger. Not just coming back after an injury, coming back stronger. So I think it's a, it would be a good book to, uh, to look up. Okay, and in terms of, so you saw in terms of the mental prep, it's being in the moment, staying in the moment, owning the moment. The emotional side, it's enjoying the moment, savoring the moment, embracing the moment. You know, so those are things which I find to be quite different than being in the moment. And so it's, it's on the triangle which I presented yesterday, that's working the right-hand side of the triangle. And we always talk about how are we doing? How are we doing mentally? How are we doing emotionally? Are we having this approach whereby we're, we're walking into the games and we're saying, we're just putting our arms around the situation and say, wow, this is great. It doesn't get any better than this. And so if, here's, for example, in, in Torino. This is, this is emotion. If we saw the posters everywhere. Passion lives here. And here's Jen Howe. She won her gold. And she, on the poster she gave me, she signed this here to Wayne. I was completely ready and my belly was smiling. And it's kind of nice when you can sign your name and put gold underneath it, you know. It's <laughs> but, and, and she's not a cocky uh, person either. But again, this little statement right here, which I have hanging beside my computer in the office at home, it speaks volumes in terms of the difference between mental, being ready, and the belly smiling. She's not smiling in here, but she's smiling in here. Because Carrie Tra, the girl who went before her, in, in the last run, had a great, great run, but Jen, in, in her belly, said, watch this. You know, and, and again, she, she had that, that, that confidence that she could do it. And this is Vancouver, and these are the athletes, and what they said to me, I had three of them, and again, they all won medals, but just look at what, what Jen said here, same girl. And this is after getting a silver and not a gold. Thank you for helping me to fully embrace the moment. And what an amazing moment it was. And she was, after she came down the hill, and, and, and Hannah Kearney came down and, and, and beat her, she was on my shoulder, and she was crying, and she was letting, letting it all out. But boy, when she got up on the podium, she was smiling and she was, uh, she was proud. And then when she had the perspective, she said, that was pretty special. Because I skied better here than I did in Torino. The other girl just was better on that day. So again, I think this perspective about helping people embrace Savor, enjoy is really important. I like this statement. I saw from a, a, a female basketball coach in the States, Pat Summit, and she came up and she said, think big. You know, think big in terms of what you can accomplish as an athlete, but focus small. Focus on details every day. What am I going to do every day? And I think it's a nice uh, little expression to, uh, to share with our athletes because it, it helps them dream, it helps them have the vision, have the mission, and, but it also says, what am I going to do today? I like this one too. Some of my athletes, some of the teams I worked with, they even put these four letters on, their, on, on the back of their t-shirts or sometimes they have it on, their, on the side of their little hats. Make every day count. Med C. Make every, we use a lot of acronyms, like yesterday I showed you the acronym CTC, Control the Controllables. But this is one which I find to be really, really helpful, make every day count. And it comes back to the choices and the, uh, and the decisions. This is a great one too. This is uh, John Wooden, great basketball coach in the United States. He's written many, many good books. He says, make every day your masterpiece. And I said, wow. And he was coaching a basketball team at, at UCLA, and they won 10 NCAA titles. But he talked about, he said, games should be easy. Games are easy. Practice is where it takes place. And we practice at such a high tempo that we make every day a, a masterpiece. And, and again, this was another, this is a football coach, came up with this saying. And I like it because it's short. It's three, three words, it's sticky. Win the day. Win the day. Just win the day. So between these things, and again, I'm, I'm throwing these things out here to help you with your athletes, to help them focus on process, getting better every, every day. And then I come back to the, the word choice yesterday, success. It's a choice. It's a choice which the athlete, they can, they can win the day, they can work hard every day. This one I got from a coach, 
It was not published anywhere. It's one of the national junior team coaches with our, our hockey team. And he said, we're not born as winners. And we're not born as losers. He said, what we're born as, we're born as choosers. And I like it because choosers and losers, it rhymes. It goes, it goes together. You're not a, a loser. You're not born as someone who loses. You're born as someone who makes choices. You're a chooser. You choose to work hard. You choose to focus. You choose to be in the moment. You choose to have good body language. So all these things are choices. So I think the more the athlete realizes, I can make those choices. You know, so again, this is one of the teams I worked with, one of the hockey teams. When the guys walked into the dressing room, that's what they saw on the wall. What will I do today? What will I do today? And so that, that's something which reminded them every day is a chance to get better. And as they go out, they're leaving, going out that door, they see these words here. What did I do today? And that's in the, in the weight room too. Those words are there. What will I do today? But I think it's just, the more we can be creative, and athletes are very visual, and so we present them with these visual things, and I think it really, really helps. Okay, and again, if it is to be, this one, I, I really like this expression. I call this the 10 most powerful two-letter words in the English language. If it is to be, it is up to me. If it is to be. In other words, yesterday I talked about pointing fingers and whatnot, and, the, and focus on the three pointing back at you. That's the me factor. If it is to be, if it's going to happen, it, it's up to me. Here's uh, Joanie. Richette, who to me showed unbelievable courage, you know, when we were in with her in uh, Vancouver and her mama had passed away. And you know, when you talk about the power of the mind and the power of the heart, I mean, she just, uh, right there, she's looking up at her mom after her long program and she's saying, merci mama, merci mama. And th these are uh, the two girls, there's, there's uh, Chloe and there's uh, Justine. This is after the runs in, uh, in Sochi. It's kind of nice, you know, when you can, you can be there to, to sell, have these moments and just celebrate. So today I'm going to talk a little bit. She won the gold, her sister won the, won the silver. And when they're standing on the podium, top of the hill, they looked at each other, and I'll always remember, uh, Justin reached over and, and grabbed her hand. You know, she said, I just want to hold my sister's hand. You know, and that, it was very, very emotional to see that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump into um, the next little uh, presentation here. And I'll give you a, an example of some of the things we actually do right there at the Olympic Games. So a lot of the things I've been talking about is going into the games, getting ready for the games, making every day count. Now what happens at the games? As I mentioned, this emphasis on podium is something that can be a distraction to the, uh, to the athletes. And again, the, my athletes, you, can, you saw what they, they said there. Okay, here's the, uh, th this comes from, from Jen Heil, the same person in that word perspective. Look what she says. She sent me a text on e after the games. You gave me the gift of perspective with the expectations of a country on my shoulders. You helped me apply the pressure instead of feeling the pressure. And that's exactly what we did with, uh, with Alex Bilodeau, with, with the other athletes, we applied the pressure. Don't get tight, apply the pressure. And you know what's interesting? That Alex, who won in Vancouver, and he won in Sochi, both times he was not the last guy to come down the hill. And when Jen won in, in uh, Torino, she was not the last girl, she was second last. But they put pressure on the other person. They came down so fast that the other person tried to keep up and, and, they, and they made a mistake. You know, so again, I really like this, this concept of applying pressure and it's something I just borrowed. Borrowed from basketball, borrowed from hockey, because when you apply pressure, the other team is back on their heels and they haven't got time and they haven't got space. So I think it's a, it's a great, uh, great statement, but I really enjoyed it because Jen, we talked about perspective and then she's able to write about it. And she's able to, uh, to thank me for, for giving her that, uh, that perspective. And again, there's Alex, there's a situation we had. Now this is something which is kind of interesting. At those Olympics, I would call this in 
my little interactionist box, it's environment management. In other words, we work a lot on helping the athlete here. This is something I did in Torino with Jennifer. I did it again in, uh, in Vancouver. Between qualifications and finals. I went into the waxing, the waxing area, found a room, and then I talked to our physiologist. We got her a bike. I took her bag in there. I went shopping. I, I got some posters. This is just a little room where she could spend three hours. With Alex, it, it didn't matter. He, he was okay, like he didn't need space, but she's the person, she needed space. But we didn't have time to get back to the village because we're up in the mountains. So again, setting up this, this room, there's, and this reminded her of when she was a kid up in uh, Edmonton, going to ski in the Rockies up in uh, Jasper. So I put that, that poster right up here open, out on the wall. This is, I went to Home Sense downtown Vancouver, bought her a little chair, little, little, little flower. It's, it's artificial flower, it's not a real flower, but it kind of looks good. These little candles, little things you put, the, you turn them on there. So, and again, you know, you can't measure. This is something which I think in terms of her, the climate, and she really, really appreciated that. And it, it allowed her just to have that quiet time to do her stretching. And the coach came in and we talked about how she was going to approach the, uh, the finals. But with Joanne, it was a totally different situation in that her mom had had a heart attack and now was no longer with us. So what we had to do was to come up with something which was going to really help her. And with all the athletes, I mentioned yesterday, I do these I know lists. And I started doing it with, um, with Jen Heil. I started doing that with Jen Heil in, uh, in, in Torino. And I just take my little, my little yellow pad here, and what I do is I, I write down I know list, I know. And we usually come up with 10 I knows. And I'll show you a little interview here with Jennifer, with uh, Joanie where she talks about it. I know I'm healthy, I know I'm fit, I know my program, I know I've got a great program, I know I've had great training, I know I've got a great support staff. All the I knows, and then we always leave the last I know to be filled in the last day. And so I thought something like, I know I can be in control would help her because so much was going on in her life. Like she'd lost her mom and she just was trying to get to deal with that situation. But, and her coach and the doctor and myself were with her an awful lot. We gave her the choice of, you can, if you're going to skate, you can have your meals back in the residence in your room. You don't have to go to the cafeteria. She said, no. I'm going to go. And some of the friends, some of my friends, like Mike Babcock, who was coaching the uh, men's hockey team, he'd come up and talk to her, and he'd lost his mom when she was 53 years old, and uh, he'd, he'd talk to her. But it was really a, an amazing situation in terms of how everybody dealt with it. And, uh, and so, the, but the last thing we came up with, which I thought would be, I know I can be in control, she said, it doesn't really resonate. And I said, I know I can, you can stand tall. She said, I love it. I love that. And we talk French all the time too. But stand tall means being like this, having that, that body language. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you that little clip here. It's right here. Uh, Joanie Rochette. Oh no, it's not that one. I'm going to give it... I'm Actually, I'll go to the 48-hour one. I remember saying to Joanie before she went on the ice, I said, Joanie, we love to skate. Just go on the ice. When you're going around the ice, I said, feel the wind. Feel the wind going through your hair. Feel your soft knees. Feel your edges. When we step onto our stage and we go onto the rink, you know, it's 100 feet by 200 feet. It's pretty cool. It's a place where you can go onto the ice team, and when that door closes behind you, it's yours. Nobody can get to you other than her coach. When Lana talks and says, this is what it is, I, this is the best thing for you, this is how it's going to happen, and this is the result we're going to get, she believed them. It was really hard just to stroke her onto the ice. My head wasn't really at it. My eyes were still 
drying from what I have heard in the morning. It was actually good to have wind in my face and help them dry out. But when I saw the Japanese girl do perfect triple last mess next to me, that kind of spirit came back right at that moment. I knew why I was there. And I just watched them. I'm like, okay, watch this. I'm going to do one even better. And I think that's what saved me. I had worked for so many years to be there. Since I'm very young, all the time my parents would take me to Montreal to get one extra hour of skating. I was done when I skated before school early in the morning. I left home when I was 12 years old to go live in another family to be able to, to skate more, to be with a better coach, to be with my own family. For the last four years, all I think about when I go to the ring is Vancouver 2010. without having a doubt. I always had a doubt in my mind. And for me, that's a good thing. My weakness was the short program. I knew I was not allowed to make any slight mistake in a short program. So that was my biggest challenge. There's a standing tall right there. I've been working with a sports psychologist uh, for a long time. He was there in Vancouver with me. We always do an I know list just to get me more confident about the competition. Things like, I know I have the best programs in the competition. I know I can trust my my instincts, I know uh, I have clean jumps, well, things like this, and I usually read it right before going on gas. I prepare for, for anything, but when my mother passed away, I couldn't prepare for that. And usually I like to fill out the last, uh, last item of the list, the day of the competition, or the day before the competition. So I had all this list, and my number 10 was still blank. So I thought it was good. If you can finish up with, I know I can gain control. So I said that to her, I said, huh, Joni, how about I know I can gain control? She kind of like this. And then I said, how about I know I can stand tall? I saw the standing tall as being, there's lots of stuff going on in your life. Rise above. This right. I remember saying to Joni before she went on the ice, I said, Joni, we love to skate. Just go on the ice. When you're going around the ice, it's a field. Okay, we'll get back to our little text here. Okay, yeah, so, uh, you know, I guess the only thing better than that would be to have Joni sitting right here with us and uh, explaining how she was able to to get through it, but in terms of, people have asked me a number of times, how did Joanie get through it? And I like to think in threes, and and I, uh, the three things that I came up with was courage, because I remember when after she'd seen her her mom's body at the uh, at the hospital, and we woke her up at seven at six thirty. Or she got up at 6:30, and they explained what happened. We had to be to the hospital before eight because they were taking a body to the morgue. And on the way back to the village, when Mano said to her, "You don't have to make a decision today if you're going to skate," and she said, "I want to skate for my mom," then I said, "You'll skate with your mom." And th and and then Mano said, "You don't have to practice today because your mind is probably not not there." And she said, "I'm going to go. I want to be on the ice." And that's, that's, that's where I feel good. And then the competitiveness, you heard, like I remember when she came back to the boards and uh, Mano said, how's it going? And we talked about her edges and, 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 the, and the wind going through her hair and stuff. And she saw the Japanese girl do a jump, she says, I can do better. I can do better than that. You know, but again, the competitiveness, but the courage to, to actually skate, and then the focus, to be totally in that moment just totally engaged. And I think it's easier in a sport like figure skating because you have music. And you have a program. And you have a, a, a personage that you're trying to interpret. And so I think it, it's kind of easier than say, I remember working with a, uh, a diver going into um, London, Alex Dipati. 
and he'd hit his head on the diving board in, uh, in uh, Madrid six weeks before, doing it back two and a half, and he hit his head, cut wide open, took, his, took his, all his hair right off. And they had to put 14 clips in and 40 stitches, put his hair back on. But he got to the Olympics. But again, him, he doesn't have any music. He's not like when he was, when he's there, we're doing everything we can to be able to get rid of that, that past. But the focus here, and then the other word I use is will. I mean, the will is so, so important. Being able to get, so, something is difficult, but you push through it. You find a way. You find a way to, to have the courage and the focus and the, uh, and the will. You know, so those are a couple of things here. So uh, again, with Joe and e, what we had, a, we had a plan in terms of what we did at the Olympics. There were professionals surrounding her. There was a doctor, there was her coach, there was a media person, there was myself, and so it was a really small group. And we, we protected her privacy. We moved her boyfriend into the village. He had a condo outside. We were through Van Ock, we were able to get him in. And, uh, and it, was, it was an amazing situation. But again, only people who knew her personally would have access to her. And so I think these kinds of things, what they did was they really, really, really helped. And you know, in terms of, I showed you what I did with, with Jen Heil, giving her the little room, privacy between uh, qualifications and final. Here's Manon. This is Manon Perron, that's Joni on the ice. And you probably notice this thing here. They don't have the boards. The arena where they were skating was the same arena for short track speed skating. So they have these big pads on the boards. So Mano usually talks to Joni, she leans on the boards, and then they do a little clap before she goes out and skates and stuff. But here she couldn't, she couldn't reach her. And Man Joni is five foot two. Mano is five foot one. So they're not very tall. So what I did was, I said, I saw them talking like this, so I went and got the, the box, the first aid box. <laughs> I said, she needs some help to get a little bit higher. So then she was, and this is the, the guy coaching the, 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 Rus the Russian guy coaching the uh, Japanese girl. And so like he's about six feet, here's my Nona, she's a little bit taller than, than him. So again, you know, getting back to some of these things and what we did, this is Alex going into, uh, in, into Sochi. And the mindset, the mindset which, uh, which he had, you know, and the choices what he had, he could, he could think about defending his gold medal. He could think about repeating, and that's what the media were saying this all the time, and we didn't go there. He could keep getting better. For the two years going into the Olympics, he kept working on things, working on things. So he's coming down the hill, working on having independent suspension in his ski. So it wasn't just his legs together, but he could work, in the, so he could adapt and adjust better to the moguls. Bringing his best when his best was needed and being able to perform on demand. So I think, you know, what, what all that does is like, what I like to do is, again, in terms of kind of creative and sticky sorts of things, I look at the, and, and conceptually, I say the athlete can be thinking about this here. This here is all about future. And, and sometimes the athletes, what they do is they focus so much on, on, on outcome. They focus on outcome, and so what, I, what I've done is I take three tennis balls, sometimes I take three pucks, three golf balls, whatever, but I put Velcro on them. And I said, we have three things going on here. We got the past, we got the present, and we got the future. If you notice on this, this tennis ball here, the future says match point. I work with a lot of tennis players. You have break point, you have set point, you have match point. That's not in the moment. That's all in the, uh, in the outcome. So what, and, and this, is the, this is the present, and this one's the past. So what I say, these things, there's a good book by Eckhart Tolle called The Power of Now. It's a kind of a difficult read, but it's a, there's two chapters which are really good. How to be in the now, and, and why your mind doesn't want to go there. Because the outcome, the future, the results, the podium, all that, it, it wants to be in the present. And things that have happened in the past, if something's gone wrong, or maybe you, I work with skiers who come back from big injuries and then they have to go back to that same ski hill. Or people who have had maybe a hockey player, a bad shift on the ice, they made a bad play. And instead of going back to the bench, what they do, as Kiara said yesterday, they reset. So they have a, we have a little, pro, they, they go back, they take a deep breath, they sit down on the bench, they say forget it, let it go. 
They tap the stick on the boards, head and shoulders up, regroup, refocus. Sometimes we have fun with it too in terms of resetting, regrouping, getting out of the past. I say uh, with the younger athletes, think of Taylor Swift. What would Taylor Swift, the singer, say? Shake it off. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Shake it off means let it go. Get it, shake it off, get, get it out of your mind. So again, but again with the Velcro, it, you know, the, the, the past wants to be stuck in there. The future wants to be stuck. Get rid of it. So if you can bring a, if you're a hockey, working with hockey teams, those girls you're going to work with, you can do this with the pucks there. You can say, hey, that bad shift, get rid of it. Have a technique for getting rid of it. So again, these are some of the things which help the athlete. These are things about every day. That's about the present. Keep getting better. And then when you get your chance out there, go at it, apply the pressure, and see if uh, the, other, the others can, uh, can keep up with you. Actually, I'll show you Alex uh, coming down the hill in that, uh, that last run. And it's kind of interesting because the title, what they did was they, they, they called it Defending. But here he is. This is so... of Canada, trying to repeat as the Olympic champion. Listen, it, trying to repeat. His brother's here, his biggest fan. Back up, hold full to perfection. He's driving down the mountain. So rhythmic, so smooth. Off axis, 1080. Is that the run that he's been planning for since the break? Dogs the landing. Alex Bilodeau. Huh. It takes a lot to make him happy, and he is clearly pleased. That is the run he's been dreaming of. Just coach liked that one. <laughs> <laughs> coach said that was okay. Backflip, two twists. He's on axis. He executes it to perfection. You can see how much better he is as skier here than he was in Vancouver. Cleaner. Drives down that course, lays together all the way, off axis 1080, so tight and clean. Tom's his landing. That was special. People say that Alex Bilodeau took a break. He didn't take a break from training. He didn't take a break from working on his game. He just took it to another level. 26, 31. Unbelievable. <laughs> 26-31 for Alex Villado, a sensational score, but two more to go in Mark Antoine Gagnon and Mikael Kingsbury. Alex Villado is in the top position, but there are two more competitors to go. Both of them are Canadian. You know, it's interesting. He was the third last to go. And in terms of regrouping and resetting in the qualifications, he got caught kind of back seat. The, the conditions were quite difficult. And uh, he ended up coming 13th after the qualifications. And so like then he had to work his way back through the semis and then into the final. So he was only third last to go. And Mark and Regano and the Mikael, who was like winning all the races that year, went after. But they, when they saw Alex go, they said, ooh boy. So the, he had applied the pressure. And, and even Mick got to watch him on, on top of the hill. But I'll show you at the same Olympics with, um, was just in. You see another, here's a 19 year old totally enjoying three the moment. Down, three to go, two Canadians in this last three, and that begins. What's, what's a loosening Canadian up? Before the point, having an outstanding the imagery, the World Cup breathing. Series. Five podiums already this year, the youngest of the three, but you wouldn't know. She's such a firecracker. She calls herself a lion when she's on course. Big 360. She has to let it go. She's been slow. Here she goes. She's building the speed, attacking the moguls. This is where she'll make it or break it. She's been a little conservative, but she is attacking now. She's shown she can push Hannah Carney. Big back layout. She can push her. Great here. turns. We're yet to see what the judges think of that. That was a very solid run. Will it be fast enough? No, but though the judges want to see fast, aggressive skiing. 
Some always, relief there. Always having a good time, Justine. Big 360. Very patient. Beautiful back layout. Patient was one of our key words. Form. Patient. She turns all the way across the finish. The judges like that. There she is. She just takes it up. Let's her hips go through, taking her higher and higher. Think she's having fun? <laughs> Always having fun. Bronze of the world last year, 22.44 for Justine Dufour La Point. And that means Justine Dufour La Point is assured of a medal because that is the best score we've seen so far. What a fantastic performance from Justine in just her first Olympic Games. You know what's kind of interesting? They changed the uh, the format for the scoring. Like, they wanted to make freestyle skiing like figure skating, where a coach sits with them when they're getting their their grades or their score. And uh, the coaches are up top of the hill, so they couldn't get down. So the girls and Alex said, "Can we have Wayne?" <laughs> so I had to go. I had to sit there through, I think about six runs each. At maybe. Uh, 15 times I had to go there, and, and the big Russian guy who was controlling the security, he'd see me coming, he said, you have good skiers, you have good athletes. <laughs> I said, you keep coming there. But Alex, when he had his run, and they gave him 26 point something, he turned to me and he said, that was low. He said, I should have 28. But, they, but because he wasn't the last to go, they saved some, some, some points. And Alinda, you were there. I think you saw that uh, that stuff. But anyway, but it, uh, I'm just going to finish up here with the uh, another little quick example, and then we'll uh, we'll go on to um, a couple of questions. And then Kiara, I was five minutes late in starting, so I get to get extra five. Okay, here's uh, here, here are the girls again. This was kind of like, you get to see. You know what's interesting? And I firmly believe in the psychology of uh, individual differences. Individual differences in the sense that here's a, like, Chloe is calm, and so we have to come up with keywords like attack and affamé, be hungry, and, and all that. Kind of stuff. Whereas <coughs> she's a little firecracker. She just likes, she loves to go, loves to go fast. And so for her, we use Katy Perry's song in terms of the roar and the tiger and all that, and don't say Vic Malin. But with her, we, we try to get her into a situation whereby she would have more of an attack, m be more aggressive. And so, and it turned out that they both got uh, medals. This is another little one, I, I'll just finish with this. This is uh, Antoine uh, valois forti a judo athlete I worked with in London. He was 22 years old, about 10th in the world, not supposed to win a medal. But you know, what we did was we took the match the five minute matches and broke them down into one minute segments. And we talked about being relentless. Just be relentless, apply the pressure, go for him, go for him. He's kind of a tall guy and it's hard for them to get a hold of him, but he would keep coming at guys, coming at, coming at them. So this is him and we talked about putting on your game face. In other words, it's, it's fine to me. This is him with his Olympic jacket, nice smiley kid. Now this is him just for the match. Okay, we talked about applying the pressure. Again, this is him imposing his will, breaking his will. This is the same kid now with that nice smiley face. And you're going to see here, look at this. That's him now. So he's gone from that smiley guy. Ooh. All of a sudden, he's, he's looking at that guy. I'm coming at you. And I'm, I'm going to come at you. And I'm, and I'm going to be relentless. This is him at the end of his match where he'd, uh, he'd won. And he had to go through a repechage too, too, and he fought an American guy in the end and, uh, and, and beat him. And here's the same guy, <laughs> same person again. Now he's got his medal, he's got his bronze medal, and he's going to be there uh, this summer. And he'll be, now he's among the top three in the, uh, in the world, so we'll deal with the pressure in a little, uh, little different way. But I think these things, what they do, is they just really speak volumes to the importance of having these mental skills which allow the athlete to free it up. Because all this talent and all this training is in their bodies, but so often they don't get it out because they're thinking about outcome, letting people down, being, being tense, being, uh, being tight. But it's so nice when you see them get up there 
And, and that, that's why I really like this example here, because the girls, as I mentioned yesterday, what I, what I did was, the very first time I did this was in 2006 with, with Jen, when we did her I Know list, and then I, I, I gave it to her, and she came down the hill and was in her pocket with the girls, they had it right here. And Chloe said, I had it right here because it's right beside my heart, coming, coming down the hill. You know, so these, these things are pretty uh, special, and uh, they're, they're concrete, they're simple, and I think the more you can make things concrete, simple, and visual with your, uh, with, with your athletes, and it's something like this with the, the, the three, three, uh, three uh, dimensions of time, past, present, and future. Where do you want to be? You want to be in the present. And maybe we could take a couple of questions and get on to... Uh, how to care? Right here in the front. What was his ten list? I, I know. Please. He, well, his his thing was again. I know I'm healthy. We we always start with I know I'm healthy. I know I'm fit. I know if I got training. I know I got a great coach. He had Nicola Nicola Gill, his his coach, and so we went through all those things. I know I can attack. I know I can be relentless. So, and I know I can be in the moment. I know I can take it one minute at a time. Boom, 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 boom and I know I can make it happen. So again, the I know list, what they do, is they become a function of the sport that they're in. Like with, uh, with Joni Rochette, it was I know I've got clean jumps, I know I've got a great program, I know this, I know this, I know this. With the judo, it's totally different. That's what I find fascinating, is working across these sports in terms of being able to understand the different task demands, understand the different uh, personalities, and make these things stick so they can, they, they see it as a, uh, as a toolbox. Yep, anybody, yep, yep. Uh, if you are talking about figure skating, there is a music and your own program, and as uh, skiing, you have this track, you know the track. Mm -hmm. in, in judo, it's totally different. Yeah. You, don't, you don't know what's coming up. No. You don't, you don't know whether this is a, Five seconds or five minutes. Yeah. So, any any differences? In yeah. The, the the differences are, and again, they're differences, but they're similarities. But in, you don't know what's coming, but you know I can adapt. I know I can adapt. I know I can adjust. You know, and, and again, he's a very unorthodox kind of fighter because some of the guys are, are stockier and shorter. He's he's kind of tall, so they have a hard time get, getting a hold of him. And so, but again, he, he says, I, I know I can be relentless and I know I can adapt. So whatever the strategy that the other person is going to do, but one thing for sure, he's going to keep attacking and he's going to be, he's going to be relentless. Yep. Any question? Okay. Yeah, um, Alex won a goal in, in Vancouver, which wasn't easy, I suppose, but it can be even more difficult to win another goal in the Olympic Games. Did you have a special approach or plan for that? Yeah, well, the plan was, uh, as I kind of mentioned, it's uh, about getting better, go getting better every day, not thinking about repeating, not thinking about defending, sort of pushing those things aside. And it took, actually, Alex a full, I'd say, a year and a half to change his style of skiing. Like, he's al already the best in the world, but he wanted to take his skiing to a higher level. So there's this coming down the hill and not just having the skis together, but being having having the, the weight on, on both feet, so he, he can, if he's getting thrown around, he can adapt and he can adjust, so he would always be in control. So again, that was the, the motivation and that was the, uh, the pride part of it, was I'm going to just keep getting better and better and better. But actually, after the Olympics, we had, he, had a, um, he had a difficult year because the next year he wanted to dominate. He wanted not just because he's very proud. He just didn't want to win by a, by a couple of points. He wanted to win by a lot. So again, he had to kind of back off, and that's when his coach said, "We're gonna we're gonna learn a new way, add another te technique, you know, to your to your skiing." So, the in answer to your question, the the uh, the emphasis was on on improving, getting better, and performing, as opposed to thinking about repeating or defending. Yep. Yes. Question. One of my bowling friends. Yeah. <laughs> what is your personal passion in your work? And what kind of uh, personal uh, process goals have you got? Per my personal goals is to help them. Oh, it's, pretty, it's a good question. It's a simple answer. Help them perform to their max and help them in totally enjoy. Enjoy the journey, which is the training part, but also to enjoy being there. Like, so when I see someone like, like Jennifer Heil, and I see her saying, 
Wayne, you helped me to embrace the moment. Wayne, you, you gave me the perspective. The, to me, that's, that's the personal enjoyment. But also, I do like creative things like with Jen. I work at the university, and whenever we would meet, like she was going to McGill, we'd meet for, for lunch, and I'd make the lunch. I make the, I've got a blue box, she has a pink box, you know, and so it's like your daughter. I've, I've got a daughter, not quite as old as her. But again, so we meet for lunch, we sit by the river, and we, we talk about what she's doing. So again, those are like really enjoyable moments, you know, and, and so, and I remember when, when she retired, she said, Wayne, thanks for everything you did for me, and thanks for, for being there, all, always available. Call, she'd be calling from Japan, calling from Ruka, you know, calling from, from different, uh, different places, and I'd always, always be there. And, and she said, and, and especially for the lunches, you know, so you can you, you create a good uh, connection. Okay, merci beaucoup. Uh, kitos, I guess I could say so in French, I would say merci beaucoup, but here it's a, a big kitos to uh, Sarah, Sarah for organizing everything and getting me here. Okay, merci, thank you. Thank you.